Okay, it's just let me, so let me just, fucking <laughs> rude. Like five days. Let me just finish Fuck this question. You. How? Who has five okay. days to go celebrate someone? And then on top of it, they're probably like, oh, by the way, we're also doing like a destination wedding then on top of no. it. no. Welcome back to Give It To Me Straight. I'm Alex. And I am John. And we're your, your gracious, 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 gracious host. host. Wow, John. We're here. How we're you back. Look at Kobe. Fantastic. He's always by us. I was, yes, he is. I was dying in the last episode because I just felt like during all the questions, his you could see his tail. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you look closely, you could see. So how was your weekend? What did you do? I hung out with you and our <laughs> friends who came to visit. Why don't you sound excited about that? It's just always a whole to do. You know, you got to clean the house. You know, you got to be the... I think it wouldn't have been an issue if... Oh, wait. I don't want to share our news yet. Well, So we'll, I'll give that update later. But <laughs> I was going to say it wouldn't have been an issue if X, Y, Z. Right. But um, I, I mean, it was a great time. Like Three days is a perfect amount of time. Yes. Hands down. I think the older we get, I think for everyone, the older you get, the more you're like, you just, you like your own space. It's your, your comfort zone and having people come is perfect for a short amount of time. Well, also I think if you're exploring like Europe or something, obviously you need to be certain places. No, your longer. house. I'm talking about your house. But yeah. When people are coming to your house or yeah. even if we're going to other people's homes, like I don't even want to stay with my parents oh. that many days. You miss your bed. You miss your me time. You're just like, you're your own like comfortable space. But my cup feels fill full. It feels fulfilled. Fulfilled, yeah. Full. No, it was such a great weekend. There are my some of my best friends from college and we all live in different parts of the country now. So it was just so nice. To, we see each other now maybe like two or three times a Last year. That's how I saw them was their wedding. It's crazy. Was, you did? For me, it was two years ago. Really? Yeah. That's wild. I know. I mean, we had a Mexico City trip together this summer, but I think that was the last time I saw them. But... It's, it's just, harder the older you get. Yeah. It's harder. I mean, you I have to put in the effort the older that you get have to. to keep friendships. I mean, we talk every day, but like if we didn't schedule trips to intentionally see each other, I'm like, we, when would we see each other? Right. So it was so nice. And I'm just glad the weather was nice. I know. No, the, the weather definitely held up, which was awesome. Yeah. Going to Mal. Can we talk about Malibu for a second, though? I just I think it's a little overrated. I think it's a little overrated. I mean, the amount of times we've gone there and they weren't that impressed. Do you like they talked and they were like, what's the real estate? You have this main fucking road that's you can never find parking. And then it's like shops and like some beach. It's, it's for the views. I mean, the vibes are good. But like, do I think that Malibu is better than the Hamptons? No, I like the Hamptons better. If I'm if I'm talking bougie to bougie, like there's Actually, more to do, I think, out there than in Malibu. But that also could be because we are not we don't really know Malibu that well. I don't really I mean, know the Hamptons beautiful. though either. I've only been there a couple of times. Mm. But Malibu's pretty sure, but it's like a it's a pretty drive to get there. It's not like we go there every weekend. It was All just I'm like saying a it's nice just, it's a lot of hype. I just think it's a lot of hype in Malibu. Well, you think everything's a lot of hype. I do. I do. That's true. I could look at pictures online. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is what's crazy about you. You would so much rather not spend the time to do something if it's not going to be a 12 out of 10. You're like, if it's only going to be an 8 out of 10, mm, it's not worth like, it. Like, okay, like going to <clears throat> a football game. If unless I have amazing seats, what's the point? No, you spoke about Coachella and how you want VIP, and we no, no, came but this to the is conclusion different. that you don't want to go. What's the point if I can watch everything on TV in the comfort of my home? I could see a better image than like if I'm in the nosebleeds, I can't see shit. The atmosphere. I mean, I understand that because it was like when we went to the Taylor Swift concert, we were so far away where I was like. Well, actually, no, I love that. That was <laughs> that was great. No, I know. But we, we got were, free food and okay, shit. Okay, but you're talking about the experience of like being up that high because of like the suite, which we were lucky enough to be invited to. Yeah, that but, was like, great. We were so far that like the concert itself, it's like unless you're going to be so close to it, similar to a football game. It's like, why not just go home? Right. Why battle traffic? That did suck. Going to that concert, it was, what are we like eight miles from that yeah, place? No, we're, I think we're only 40 minutes away, maybe 45. And it took us two and a half hours to get First there. First off, that's not 45 minutes. Away. We're literally eight miles away from where, where that venue was. No, but and it took us two hours to get but there. But generally it's like 45 minutes with traffic to get there. 
But okay. either way, I mean, I just think that when it comes to leaving your house, the older that you get, you really do have to weigh the pros and cons to things. But always, though, I think it's still worth it to go for the experience. It's better to get out of your house, to do things, make stories. I would always rather do something that maybe isn't as fun of a time then have like another boring day on the couch. I don't know if I'm an old soul. I just feel like, you know, I've already done everything I wanted to do. Think about think about the time like we went to a cooking class when your parents came this winter. It was fucking terrible. Oh my God. <laughs> Did we not talk about no, that? because we... <laughs> oh, let's talk about that real quick. There's so many little things that like we've not talked about since well, we had a like, break. When people ask for a general update, it's like there's too many things we have no updates. That's but, like, like what's your favorite this is, movie? This is a specific thing. That For me, it's hard John's to parents were coming into town and I was like, let's obviously plan things. Let's do things. So I was like, ooh, for Christmas, we could do a cooking class. And it was like the day after Christmas or maybe the day before Christmas, I don't remember. But I had Googled like private cooking classes. John's mom is Italian. So I was like, she would love to do a pasta making class or just something in the Italian realm. So I find this private chef I, sh I should have stopped you right there, by the way. If you're Italian, like my mom, the last thing she wants to do is have somebody else school her on how to make something but better than her. But your doesn't make her own pasta. She knows how to. But she own. doesn't. Keep so going. I thought it would be a fun activity for us as an Italian family <clears throat> to do together. Shut the fuck up, John. What did you plan for your parents? I don't even remember. Nothing. That. Exactly. Uh I was going to do the fucking pottery class. That's and what did I was you gonna... find it? I did. I was going to. I did. I was going to. No, I, was I did. But you didn't book it. No, because when that lady left you the message, it was really fucking creepy. She's like, come on down to the pottery class. Anyway, <laughs> so I find this private class that has five-star reviews, raving reviews. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is nice. It's like pretty expensive per person. So I'm sure it's going to be an, an enjoyable luxury experience. So I got the directions to this place. It looks like it's going to be in this... <laughs> it looks like it's going to be in the what? What did you think it was going to be? What is it? Not like residential, but like a commercial. A compound? No, a commercial building. So I was like, oh, it's probably like, you know, living spaces above and like commercial like shops below. So we get there and in the, in the description, it says to wait for a resident to enter through the gate so that we could walk through. And that's where I was like, oh, are we going into this person's apartment? Like, is this a home? I'm still trying to give it the benefit of benefit of the doubt where I'm like, no, no, no. I'm sure it's like a commercial rented space underneath these units. Um, so we ring the doorbell. I put in the code. I was already out <laughs> at this point. I was already code red. Get me the fuck out of here. There was a gate to this compound to get in. I'm like, what are we doing? Long story short, we ended up in a not so great part of town, taking a cooking class out of some woman's small teeny apartment. She's an old <laughs> Italian lady, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> I go up to the door. <laughs> the door is partially open. I'm knocking on it, knocking on it. She's like, come in. It's her apartment. It, you know, covered in smoke. I guess she, we're cooking on her in her kitchen. And uh, first thing she tells us, all of us, go wash your hands. Like, we, she doesn't know where we've been. Of course. My wash mom goes to wash cut. her hands first. She comes out. She goes, whispers in my ear. She goes, John, there's a massive shit in the toilet. <laughs> there was a massive shit in the toilet. <laughs> so so she i don't think she flushed it my dad goes in next because oh, i want to yeah. talk about this conversation <laughs> a little bit later my dad goes in next cleans his hand we all clean our hands whatever and then um when we leave i'll let alex tell the rest of the story but when we leave my dad's like which one of you took a shit in the toilet i had to scrub, scrub the it. toilet because i was embarrassed i go none of us <laughs> took a shit in that <laughs> toilet <laughs> it was a leftover shit when we got there but she was so kind. It was nice. But we do get there and we, I feel like it was hard work. Like we were getting yelled at, you know, because she's straight from Italy. And so we were kind of getting in trouble for fucking up the way that we were making this pasta. But again, it's a story. It was an experience. The only thing that I didn't love is we put all this effort and money into making this pasta because it was expensive. And then um, she gives us our servings and then she goes, the rest is for my husband and I. We made her... Husband and her, lunch, dinner, probably food for the next three days. That was the worst part for you? That was. I was clawing at I was the like, walls. I wanted to, clawing at the walls to get oh, out of that apartment. We can't take this home? We're halfway through cooking. Her husband comes home. Says hello, whatever. He's in like his work outfits. Go. It's a one-bedroom apartment, by the way. Goes back, starts taking a shower. 
while we're there. He's like taking a shower, comes out, and he's like, here's some basil. What's wrong with that? Would you get it from your bedroom? He got it from his bedroom. Who, whatever, John. Again, like you don't have to think about the little things. I'm just things. saying, what is the... Who like makes sure that this is okay? Like well, health know, inspection? So after, I was like, how does she have such great reviews? Like <laughs> I don't understand because I'm so confused at this whole experience. I feel like I was not gaslit, but what's the word that I'm looking for? You were pressured into? No, like, I just feel like I was bamboozled. And so it wasn't until the end of the class that she goes, we would really appreciate, or I would really appreciate if you could leave me a five-star review. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course. Like, sit, like I'll leave one later. I had no, I don't like to write bad reviews. So I'm like, I'm just not going to leave a review. But she goes, write it now. And I'm like, right now? She had her like laminated piece of paper that had like her Instagram handle and stuff. It's like shoving it in an She goes, no, write it now and read it to me. She goes, I love to hear them before you post. And I think you or your mom stepped in and you were like, she'll write it later. Thank you so much. Like we still tipped her. It was still an experience, but it was. I have no problems talking shit right now. I know this is a long story. I have no problems talking shit because this lady fucking hustled us. (laughs) It was so expensive per person. And I just feel like... It was very unsanitary, but it was an experience and a story. And that's my point is now if we just stayed home, you'd have nothing to talk about. My mom will talk about this always. Exactly. And so we did it for your mom. We did it for the plot. Sure. Anything that you're questioning doing, you just got to say, just do it for the plot. Just do it for the plot. Did we bring my parents to the comedy store? No. No. You said that your parents would probably cringe in their seats. Anyways, other updates, an update, a recent update. Oh, yeah. So the show we went on, Lopez versus Lopez, I think we talked about it a little bit. That we were on. <laughs> yeah. That, that we were on. That but we we're done shooting. the audition. Guys, mm-hmm. I don't think that we could give all of the details because they said no spoilers. So we won't talk about like the lines or the other guest stars or what that episode were in it. or whatever. But yeah, so we get there. We do a table read with the whole cast. Little do we know that not only is it the whole cast, it's all the producers, the executives, the, the writers, the, the everyone who is involved sits and listens to the table read. So John and I, I'm, I'm sweating. I've, I, and like, I've, I was more nervous for this in front of like 50, 60 people than I was for our live show in front of 300 people. Yeah, it was... I can't tell. I think I was equally scared for both. <laughs> so scared. And then we just, we run through rehearsals. They change the, they update the script every day. John and I have three lines max every time our lines got updated. Or being dyslexic, <laughs> my one line just got switched. Like the first part is now the last part. And so I'm like, I kept saying it wrong. My biggest thing was, I didn't know it was a live show. Oh yeah, because you go through no the, one your told rehearsals me. and then you shoot like so that you have backup, but then you have the live show, which is so long. I just I just give so much credit to anyone involved. The director was amazing, the assistant directors were amazing, the whole crew, everyone was, everyone so, was so nice, nice. Yeah. and so helpful. It made us feel so welcome. And I'm like, we have no clue what we're doing. <laughs> no clue. The amount that goes into like one episode, and then right after our live show the next day, they had to start all over again with the next one. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, they have that down to a science. Obviously, multicam, it's not their first rodeo. Right. But for us, it was such a new experience that we just didn't realize the whole process of it. I mean, it was so fun to see, though, how it worked out. And like, we sit in our trailers, we wait for them to pull us. We're just like fucking around. Like, what do we do? I feel like I was sitting in my trailer waiting to get executed. (laughs) I'm just sitting there waiting, just my one line practicing it over and over and over again until, and then, and then I get up to the stage to do it and I fuck it up. I mean, (laughs) we were there for five days. Okay. I do want to give us credit and say, I think it's harder to have only one to two lines because that's all that you're focused on to nail it. Like if you have a whole, if you have pages of things, I mean, Oh. it's impressive, but like you have a little bit more time to warm up. Like for us, we're like, this is it. We only have one line to get to in, get it. out. Yeah. But one of the actors on the show, so impressed. He is one of the leads. He wasn't holding his script by day two. He had like everything memorized. <laughs> Alex and I tried to, we're like, it's one line. What's how oh, hard yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah, we, right after we did our scene, they're like, make sure you hold your script. Yeah. They, <laughs> we <laughs> like, ha- oh, we okay. nailed our lines. We were like, fuck yeah, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it, came high five. <laughs> and then literally we got off and yeah, they were like, no, we like, we want to make sure that you guys 
truly have it. So keep your scripts on you the whole time until we tell you. But it was it was a crazy experience. I'm glad so we did fun. it. Yeah, for sure. And <clears throat> knowing what it's like now. So yeah, if you guys don't know, one of the other main characters on the show, we might have talked about this the last time. One of the kids, he his name's Bryce. He mm -hmm. was a TikToker. Yeah. And he's so talented. He's so talented. And he's just so chill and yeah. like no problems. But like you know? George Lopez, Mayan Lopez, everyone was just so welcoming and nice. It was such a good experience. Again, thank you to Debbie. Also, thank you to Adam. He the, helped like, us. Act, is he the speech coach or acting coach? Or? I think he's just the on-set acting coach because he was working on lines with everyone. He's such like, a <laughs> smart ass that I loved it. And yeah. he was just like trying to calm me down. He's like, yeah. he's like, just, you know, don't suck. I'm like, you got it. <laughs> Steve was great. Kept us where we needed to be. Annie, everyone, everyone on set, everyone on the crew, thank you so much for making us feel comfortable, even though I felt like I was going into cardiac arrest every single time <laughs> that I was on stage. Lots of pressure. Lots it's of like pressure. putting on a play. That's, I think, the difference is because it's, it's all one take. It's not like you just go and you could really repeat your lines how we do with TikTok. This is just completely different than anything we've done. So. Yeah. It's cool. I feel like we've got to experience like a lot of new things within mm -hmm. the past year and a half. It's just helping us grow, you know? Mm -hmm. So we do have one more big <gasps> announcement, but it's not the biggest announcement. Wait, is this like, do we want to release this now? Is this like, should we talk about this? Because we heard from our team that we can't release the, uh, the, the other announcement until now next week. It's not week. the actual because there's like two. we're just teasing everyone. I know. Well, we got yelled at. So we could say the first <laughs> we part. We got yelled at. There's one part that we would say. So we are... No one's going to be shocked. Moving to New York. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been a great time in LA. We did a film. We did Lopez versus now Lopez. It's time we to went to say a few goodbye. premieres. And we'll be back. But I just think that when we were really looking at the quality of our lives... We were just like at the at the core of it. What are we missing? We're East Coast people. What are you gonna miss the most about LA, John? I can't. It's not the weather because the weather has <laughs> fucking sucked the whole time we've been here. Um, I don't know. Being able to do different things, new things. I think the convenience of being here, like we got to do certain things because we lived here. Right. So I'm hoping those opportunities don't go away just because we're going to New York. Um, well, I think New York being so close to the city will have different a different set of opportunities right. for what there. we do you either have to be in la or you have to be in new york and um it just so happens that we have family in new york and that that's the biggest thing that's what, the biggest what thing, we're yeah. missing is basically community like friends friends and family we don't have any of that i feel kind of isolated out here i think it's a little bit more difficult for men to branch out like i could be friends with a branch if i wanted to well, but we know <laughs> but i just think that like I everything's just inconvenient. Like, okay, I, I tried playing tennis. <laughs> you have to fucking book a tennis court out like two weeks in advance to do that. Unless you know someone who has a tennis court in their backyard, like you can't play. My outlet was like going to the gym. I, I just think the older you get, everyone's focused on like what they're doing here. I don't know. It is harder to like meet people. We've only been here a year. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of people in LA, similar to New York City, are transplants. Like your family aren't isn't close, you know, and people who do have family close, they're very lucky. And sometimes you just don't want to live close to your family. And we haven't lived close to our family. I moved out of out of New York when I was 18. And I think we were only back there for maybe two years. But since then, I haven't been back. And as people are growing their families, my cousins are having kids, my siblings are having kids. We're just, I feel like we're missing out on a lot and we're the only people out here. And so it just, it has been a, a more difficult year being farther away with a lack of community. And again, I don't want to say that I feel like it's been crazy lack of community because again, I feel like I have so many good friends that I've made here, but it's just different. Dude, when... it's expensive as fuck <laughs> to be out here. Like 50% of your income no, is New York, gone. New York is expensive too. It's a little bit better. Teeny bit better. Right. It just, it kills me. We're just like hemorrhaging money being here. But I will say, this was the unknown because we knew New York, we knew everywhere else. We're like, let's give this a shot now. And I'm glad we came here and we can always come back. And we have connections here for work. We'll always come back for work. But it's, there's no unknown now. It's such a bittersweet. I love LA so much. I mean, I love that we just redid our house and now uh, <laughs> we're fucking leaving. We have some great people who are moving in, but yeah, it's just, it's just really a bittersweet. I think that we were here, we finished our house. 
we were like, we're supposed to feel happy, but we just feel like we're missing something. And we just kept coming back to that where we were like, you know, we can't just drive over to our family. We can't just like pop into mom and dad's. And I think too, the older our parents are getting, you just kind of look at the things in your career and in life and you're like, what do I value? I think we've worked so hard to get our career to where it is. And at the end of the day, you just want, connection with the people who you love. And so that's what ultimately what we were missing. We know that we could travel back here whenever. I think there is a world where we're going to be bi-coastal pretty soon, but I think home base for us will be New York. Just a reset. Yeah. I just feel like at, in our blood, we're in my blood. I'm just deep down a New Yorker too. All the friends that I've made here are either like loud, obnoxious, uh, funny, all East Coast qualities. <laughs> yeah. I definitely get along with all the East Coast boys for sure. Yeah. But More what my... what are you most excited mm -hmm. about for New York? Because is it the snow? <laughs> no. No, just being around like the friends and family we had there. And also like my parents live in Virginia. And my sister lives in Virginia. I could, to be able to drive, like that's my thing. Being here, I feel like I ha isolated. Like I had to fly to do anything. So being Again, on the East Coast is like I could drive wherever I want. Also, when we travel, everything's... On the East Coast, it's like I don't have to go to New York first, and then well, New again, York to anywhere I, else. Well, again, I think it would be different if we had family here. Like if you know, right? Your parents were even in fucking Napa. That would be cool. But right. yeah, I think we're just we're by our little old selves out here. I think we're very lucky to have the opportunity to go back and really just choose where we want to live. And right. so I I just want to go back because you always shit on New York. Always shit on New York. And then here you are, so excited to go back. I don't back. shit on New York you always as a yes, whole. 100%. I shit on the city. I shit on the GW. I hate. I shit on all the traffic going over there. But if we're where we're living, I don't have to leave. I like that area. Oh my god! So there's a difference. But we do move every year and a half, two years. Let's see if we stay longer than that. Who I, knows? I can't even trust myself. I'm like, oh, no. we're gonna stay here for a really long time. I, I don't even want to. I can't even promise moving that. such a bitch. We need, to, we need to stop doing that anyways. Anyway, so that's the one update. And then the next update, uh, we'll give you guys next week. Sorry. Shall we jump into questions? Let's do it. My husband finishes fast. John, <laughs> is there any way to tactfully bring this up for context? I'm always taking care of first. So that's not an issue. I just think it would be more fun if he lasted longer. Is there any way I could bring this up without hurting his feelings or making him feel insecure? Or should I just let it be? You're getting off. Let it be. Let it be. That should be what matters, you know? Like, I was are say, you satisfied? You can't get everything you want, you know? The, how many people actually get off? So you should be happy that you're just getting off and be good with that. Okay, but the bar shouldn't be on the fucking Coming floor. Coming from me, you know? Especially in marriage. Like, your husband should be able to get you off. But, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe you can bring up the conversation of him, like, jerking off in the morning. Like, because, you know... Get some <laughs> dick numbing cream. But do you think that she should address it or no? Just let it be. I mean, like if I brought it up to you and I was like, John, I want you to last longer so we could fuck around. Like, I'd be like, guy, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> but would you be? Would your feelings be hurt? No. But like, he can't help what he's doing unless I guess he could try doing like male kegels to strengthen his dick or get a numbing cream or there's like stuff he could do to like help with that but i guess have you brought up the length of your sexy time before because maybe he thinks that you like to be efficient like we've talked about this and we're like we're in and we're out we like to be efficient unless it's like we're on vacation right. or something but like if we're fucking mid work day it's like we got things to do yeah you just yeah. like the goal is to get off i mean really <laughs> i feel like that's all that matters but <laughs> maybe this question isn't for me because i'm like are we both good <laughs> Let's go. I think it's just like if you make like I think it's okay to address this. This is obviously on I'm your mind. I'm offended. But uh maybe he just thinks that you like it to be quick. One and done, yeah. One and done. So bring I it mean up. you could bring it up, but I wouldn't You should feel comfortable bringing any issue that you have or any concern that you have even if it's in the bedroom up to your partner. You guys are married. I could see him being sensitive about that the topic. I'm saying bring it up either way, but, but like don't how like, you bring it up gently, bring it up gently. But maybe don't be like, yo, you come so fast. <laughs> like maybe just, just 
address how you would like to right. extend your sexy time together. Because do you finish fast too? Like if he's taking care of you, like maybe you don't finish so fast. If you take longer to finish, oh, then it will take him longer to finish. Wow. So you extend it for yourself. Done. Next question. That was good. I'm the youngest of six kids, male, 31. And whenever I visit home, either my dad or my older brother, 43, pays for meals when we go out to family dinners. My dad and brother always argue over the bill, and part of me feels like I should be part of this conversation. I definitely don't make enough money to cover the entire bill, but I'm the only other male in the family, and it almost feels like a duty that I should step in as I get older. Also, because I'm the youngest, I almost feel like I don't have to do anything. What do you think? Your financial situation takes a, is a, takes a big role in that, right? Because, I mean, they probably understand, like, you're not making that much money, so they're not putting the pressure on you in, to, like, throw in on it. But to always offer is a good thing. That's what I mean. Like, you're in your 30s now. I don't think that we've let our parents pay for a dinner when they come visit. And, again, that's because it's our financial situation. That's but also because we're not living near them. I don't know. Like, does he live near them? Do they do this a lot? Like if, when our family or friends come to visit us, like we try to treat. Because... I just think like it's the right thing to do to at least offer to put something towards it. Like just because you're the youngest, I don't know, because I, I'm not the youngest, but like I know in families or it's, it's noticed when people don't put their foot forward or at least offer anything like in any group, when there's that one person who never offers. The gesture goes a long way. Exactly. So just, I would, just throw it out there. Because they'll probably say no. But I think as an adult man in your 30s, you don't, you're don't. you not expected to cover the entire meal. If you're meal. an adult woman, though, too. like well, Correct. Yeah. Anyone. Just Anyone. be polite. If I was going out to lunch with a friend who's even a female and like doesn't offer, I'd be pissed. I'd be like, you want to Unless like, offer? it is truly just like your parents covering. But if like, I'm the only sibling not offering, that's where I, I think that I would feel some type Especially of Especially if you invite them. Anytime you're inviting someone to go to lunch or something, right. I feel like the protocol is to pick up. The I check. don't think that there's anything wrong with offering. And as, as soon as your dad's like, no, I got it. That's when you can be like, did my part. Right. No, don't just, I think offering would go a long way. Okay. Next question. My boyfriend and I have been together now for six months. Recently, he said something that just hasn't sat right with me. He told me that his type changes every so often. Me being a short brunette with no boobs asked, what do you mean? And he said once in a while, he's into girls with massive boobs, and then he's really into blondes, etc. It's really hard for me to wrap my head around because my type never changes. He proceeded to tell me whenever it does change, he just watches porn with those girls to fulfill his needs. Is this true? Do men's types ch change regularly? Why is he having this conversation with her? That is such a weird, like, don't worry about it, babe. I'm just going to go beat right. off. I'm going to go beat off in the corner of some blonde chicks. You're not my type. But I got it taken care of. Who the fuck says that? Who says that? Also, and this might just be a question for, I don't, and I don't want to like put a blanket statement about, around men in general, but like, does type matter? Like, do you really have a type? Like, I don't have a type. Yeah. Oh, but like. Brunette, I've literally every girlfriend I've had is like. Really? A Besides like one in high school. All of my boyfriends or people that I've dated look so different. <laughs> yeah. They do. They do. No, I, I just know. don't have a type. My type comes more in like personality. Like you have to make me laugh. Your ex made you laugh? No, that's why he's my ex. Okay. <laughs> but you're saying qualities like, is that what made you date your ex? Because of uh, you, his humor? No, I definitely, well, I was immature when I started dating any of my exes back then. And so it was definitely more physical, but it had nothing to do with because I had a certain type, but like, does your type change? And again, I feel like you can't really say that about men in general. No, because, I mean, I know my type. Yeah. Brun tan, brunette. I mean, you're kind of tan. I don't know. I think it changes. <laughs> it's my spray tan, John. Thank you. <laughs> I know. John sits in the sun for five seconds, and he <laughs> literally gets the biggest tan. Um, but anyway, I just think people's types can change. Like, some days I think that I'm not like, saying t types can't change, but like I do have a type, but that's what you asked me. Yeah, sure. Types change, but that is irrelevant. I'm just saying, why the fuck did he even say that? That's all I'm concerned about right now. So what was her question? Um, I guess her question is, is this true? Do men's types change regularly? 
I mean, not everyone, but yeah, probably like, some. What, like, what, is, what does this mean? Yeah, like, because she's Either way, what not... he said is rude and inconsiderate. He shouldn't have said that to you. That's so fucking weird. Correct, so, because if you were to tell me your, your type is blonde, like a short blonde with big boobs, that would really hurt my feelings. It sounds like he's just trying to make you feel insecure for some right. reason, which is not okay. This is a deeper issue than just him talking about his type. It's it is to bring you down. Cause why would you say that? Also, him being like, I'm gonna go beat off because you're I'm not sexually attracted to you right now is basically what that's shouting out to I me. I mean, I don't wanna be a hypocrite though. Like in my past I have said like my type is above six foot. But like again, I've also then countered that mm. with that's not I realize that. Cool, that's you're not, not gonna really go watch to porn me. to six foot tall dudes and not be attracted to whoever Correct. you're with. That, that's what I'm saying. Like how he presented it presented it was really weird <clears throat> to each his own. It's normal to have different preferences or your preferences change. It's like, I like white wine and now I like red wine. Depending like your palate. Yeah. Like whatever. It's just wrong. How we talked to you about it. Next fucking question. It's about the delivery. Yeah. Which you're really not that good at. So I'm surprised that you haven't offended me in that realm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question. Am I the asshole for not telling my girlfriend a bedtime story? She asks me all the time, usually right before she's about to fall asleep. Some nights we're in bed and she asks when I'm watching TV or playing video games. Other times it's over video chat because we live separately. I'm just not good at making up a story at the top of my head. I have in the past, but it's like pulling teeth for me. I'm just not into telling a bedtime story. I will with my kids, but not my 27-year-old girlfriend. Yeah, that's fucking weird. I think you're the asshole. Tell no. your girlfriend a story. I think, I think it's fucking stupid. Why is she asking you that? I uh, I mean, I'm sure I've that, asked you that for question, a bedtime story That question before. is like, remember that trend that was going around on TikTok? Like, if I was... A worm. A worm. Is, were you thinking the same thing? If I was a worm, would you love me? Like, shut up. <laughs> are you asking a stupid question? I mean, I feel like, is she seriously asking you for a bedtime story or a joke? Because I feel like I ask it you. It seems like she's just trying to stay on the phone. As a joke, I'm like, tell me a story, John. Like, tell me a secret. And you're usually like, shut the fuck up. I mean, I'll tell you a secret. <laughs> a bedtime story? Tell me a secret. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. <laughs> that's the problem. Just like this guy. He, that's where you have it. Tell me a bedtime trouble. story, like what? Yeah, I I don't know. To me, it sounds like she's not being serious because I, I don't know who's twenty seven year old, twenty seven years old, and serious. Yeah, let's let's be real. Story. If she's fucking around with you, like that's funny, whatever. But if she's being serious, that's so creepy. You know what you should do? Get her a subscription to the Calm app. Not hashtag not sponsored, but they do have bedtime stories on there, or for free. Maybe just pull up some YouTube videos and just be like, this isn't my strong point. If she's seriously asking for bedtime stories, just YouTube some things and be like, here, no, I found this one specifically No, I don't for agree you. with that at all. So you're, you're actually saying indulge her? Yeah, why not? If that's something that she likes, it's like going to golf. You know, if I'm like, yeah, you could go to golf here. You're 27 <laughs> years old and you think it's normal that... that don't yuck someone's yum, John. I'm, I'm yucking that. That's... That's weird. That's weird. Okay. Well, I think that there's compromise there. I don't think you have to tell her the story. I think you can help her find other people to tell her the story. I would love to listen to Matthew McConaughey read me. A yeah, get, story. get the com app. Sure. Okay. Next question. Female 25 here. And I recently had my first STD. I got it from the guy I'm hooking up with and I'm unsure how to feel. We're not exclusive or anything, but this makes me question if I should keep seeing him. I'd love to ask him to be exclusive just in hooking up, not dating, but I don't know if I can have that conversation because it makes me feel like I'm asking too much. I'm not really into the hookup scene. So getting the STD makes me feel like I should maybe just jump out of that scene altogether. What do you think? What do you think? Let me not say anything, stay with this person and just continuously get STDs potentially. That's the one route you can go. My question is like, did when you addressed the STD with him, did he admit that he was like sleeping around with other people? Or is that just not part of the conversation because you, you guys are just so non-exclusively hooking up? That would bother me. That would make me not want to be, ho be hooking what up with that, that person What is it that you want to be with this person or... It's just, do you bring up the question about being exclusive in the hookup world or just leave that like scene all together because she's not really interested in That's kind of ironic. casual hookups. It's kind of ironic. Being exclusive in the hookup world. 
Well, like, you know, how, like, when you're just, like, like friends with benefits, when you're, like, not necessarily wanting to date this person, you never had that? Yeah. Sorry. I, I was yeah, assuming. You have. I, I said, yeah. I, yeah. I was kind of, like, being exclusive in a hookup world, like, where anyone hooks up with each other. I don't know. What no, the, no, no. Like, I mean, there was, pl- like, I just feel like there's the situations where you're more just, like, friends with benefits, but you mutually know we're not sleeping with other people during this time, but we're not dating. It's just casual. Right. No, you shouldn't feel some type of way. Like if that's what you want, then talk to them about it. And then if that's not what they're going to do, then you need to protect yourself. Because also like, who's to say that now they're not going to get a worse STD that you can't get rid of. You want to get it again? Or not Hmm. again, just something else that's worse because you're not in the know about their hookup culture either. So I just think it's really personal preference here. If it's important to you to keep yourself healthy and safe, I would address this with them and just be like, but I'm totally cool if you are not on board with this, but that's just not cool with me. Respect yourself. Just respect yourself. I think you just have to do what's best for you. Exactly. If if you don't like that, you can set that boundary. Yeah. Why, uh, why wait? You know, like I hate guessing. If that you already know what you want to do, so just do it. Do it. Okay, next question. I'm a 25-year-old female and huge into fitness and health and have been since 2018 when I decided to take better care of myself. The gym quickly became my happy place alongside finding balance in my diet. I've lost weight over the years and gained some back, some of that being muscle mass. Something that I've really struggled with for as long as I can remember is having big boobs. They get a lot of unwanted attention and hold me back in my fitness goals as I'm trying to do higher intensity cross training nowadays. They are literally such a pain in my daily life. I mentioned to my parents that for my birthday this year, we should go half seas on a reduction. I've done some research and I think this could be a huge benefit for me in the long run. My mom is somewhat on board. However, my dad's response really triggered me. He stated, I would be on board under one condition. She needs to lose weight first. What are your thoughts on this? For me, this was a huge trigger as someone who used to struggle with weight and feeling comfortable in her own skin. And now my own dad is saying this as a condition of him contributing to the reduction. He's seen how much work I put into my body and then said that. What do you think I should do? I'm wondering why that was his response. And do sometimes with surgeries, I don't know, a breast reduction, do you have to lose weight for the procedure? Um... Not to my knowledge, but I I don't know. I'm not, I've never needed one. So I've, I've never looked into it. So I don't really know much on it. Like I know with getting, um, a lap or whatever for, uh, like stapling your stomach or whatever, like you have to show that you you're losing weight first. So I don't know if there's any sort of something you have to do for that. No, I don't, I don't think so. You, what your dad said was weird and like you could be triggered by that. That being said, you are asking them to put money in. So that's what I was going to say. I mean, take it or leave it. I think I'm just someone who wants to be so independent that I'm like, I don't want anyone else's opinions on what I'm doing. And the second that you ask for help financially, their opinions are going to come into play. Their conditions are going to come into play. So if you don't want his condition or want his opinions on things, save up a little bit longer and pay for it yourself. I mean, I think that, not that I think his opinion is right. I do think it's an odd comment to make, especially towards, you know, you've clearly been working on your body. This is going to be helping you in the health realm. But yeah, that's just the thing. If like your parents are going to buy you anything, like they're going to have their own conditions on things. If you don't want their opinions... Do it, do it completely independently. Do it yourself. If this is something that you truly want to do, move forward with it. But I would try to do it without the help of my parents. Like, cause I don't, I wouldn't want their conditions or, you know, their certain rules around what I'm doing, what's best for me. But that's just my opinion. I would try to do it on my own. Yeah. Like everyone has goals. That's the goal you could strive for on your own. Mm -hmm. Next question. I've been married for almost 15 years. A few years ago, I caught my wife sending nudes to our mutual coworker slash friend. I was so terrified when I confronted her about it that we didn't even really talk about it or get to the point of why slash how it happened. She played it off as not a big deal. I love this woman more than I could verbalize and I was so scared I was losing her that I swallowed it and agreed to move on. 
I'd gotten over it and thought things were going really good in our marriage and family again. Recently, it came to light that this was more than just the pictures. She had an entire, at least emotional, affair with this coworker. I know that they met outside of work secretly, and I know they had explicit sexual conversations daily, and I know that our youngest child almost threw them under the bus at one point. All I don't know for sure is how physical this relationship got. And I've never been a perfect husband. I've made a lot of mistakes throughout our marriage, but I've never even considered infidelity in any form or breaking my wife's trust in that way. I'm right back where I started with this, and I feel pathetic that I'm scared to even bring this up to her. It has been some time, but the scars are still really fresh for me emotionally, and this is taking a huge toll on my mental health. How can I bring this up without seeming like I'm digging up old shit to fight about, because I personally hate that? Is it worth broaching this subject again? I really feel a need for closure on this, and I don't know how much longer I could take not clearing the air. Thanks, guys. The one thing that just stands out, what he said, he's like, the thing I don't know is how physical is it is it physical like he's trying to process this in a way it's like what he can or compartmentalize what's okay and what's not okay in his head but he's like okay so there's emotional cheating going on but is there physical because i can get past the emotional part like you are grasping at fucking straws get away from this person the person doesn't respect you uh and it's just i can't believe she was like brush it off like it's not a big deal. Like, fuck you. Fuck you. How, how are you going to say it's not a big deal? Like, you just ripped my soul out and I'm, you, you know, you just fucked me up mentally and brushing off how he feels. Right. I think what I don't love is how you're downplaying your emotions here and like you're afraid to confront downplaying her. Downplaying is the word I was looking for. Yeah, like you're like, again, even if, let, let's say even if they weren't physical, this still bothers you. The fact that she sent nudes and had an emotional affair. So physical stuff aside, if that is like not even part of the picture, this stuff is still important. This stuff is still bugging you. It's eating at you. So the fact that like she didn't address this conversation with you or didn't have the decency to communicate with you about this and really give you an answer is not okay. I think you have every right to bring this up again because it's what you're feeling. There was no closure I think bringing up having a mutual therapist between you guys and just be like, I think it's very appropriate and understandable to say this happened in the past. I don't want to rehash old wounds, but I have not healed from this. We did not take the appropriate steps to heal from this. And this is what I need from you. And if she can't respect that, fuck that bitch. I can't believe you're telling this guy to like go through the steps to potentially save this marriage because that's what it kind of sounds like well because he wants to they've been together for 15 Don't. years they have kids together He's like, i feel kind of embarrassed i i mean i would i would feel embarrassed i would feel i would be so upset so you think he should just go straight to divorce she did it once she's doing something else like this has anything is, changed but that's what i'm saying like I think what he's saying is their marriage is like seemingly better, but he got information about what had happened back then. So that's not something new. Correct. Like, I don't think that this is, it's new information about something that had happened. Okay, in so the she past. fucking lied or she kind of like, yeah, it's not like she's I, uh, at least according to the, this question, I don't think she's continuing something else. Dude, you just, don't fucking know. But you don't know. But again, like, if your marriage is seemingly okay and this was something that is now water under the bridge, but now with this new information, it wasn't just nudes. They were talking on the regular. This is new information that you have. And I think you have every right to bring it up. But you, but what more. are your opinions? I, I'm already like, there's more. If you're finding out more information from another source, there's still other shit she's hiding or details or but little bits and so pieces. You think this marriage is done. They shouldn't. I think the marriage should be done. Yeah. Probably. She doesn't respect you. Know, you. I don't know. I just. I think that she doesn't respect you like fuck this chick. I, I just think that he doesn't want to throw it away. They have kids. They've been married for 15 years. Like give her the floor. And if she doesn't, if, and if she still doesn't respect you there, whatever, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you're asking my opinion. That's my opinion. Like, I, I don't think she's, she's look, worth I'm not, I'm the not mental space. Corner. And she's, all she's going to do is keep torturing you. So, you know what? You you can 
compartmentalize all this. You can try to but justify you know why it. He's feeling this way. It's because they haven't communicated. A lot of that is on her, but he also has to respect himself enough to require that in his partner. You know, like you can't just let someone brush that under the rug. No, you should really just keep burying stuff inside until you implode. <laughs> like fucking do, do something. These conversations are not easy, but you're not making it easier on yourself by avoiding it. No, you're not doing yourself any favors. Have the tough conversation. It's not digging up old shit again because... Your kids will understand in the future when they realize their mom's an asshole. Great segue into the next question. Am I the asshole? <laughs> well, best of luck, sir. <laughs> next question. Am I the asshole? One of my childhood best friends is getting married this summer, and I am in the wedding. When the topic of the bachelorette party came up, I informed the bride that I would not be able to spend more than $1,500 at the absolute most when she asked me what I would be willing to spend. I knew the bride was talking about going on a trip for five days, but she was not wanting it to be too expensive. I told what? What are you already shaking your head at? I'm just so tired of all these people like expecting other people to spend so much money. I would hate to be a woman. I would hate <laughs> it. You have to do the bachelorette party. You bridal have to, shower. Bridal shower. Engagement party. Is there a gift? Is there so? What is like? What is the most ex extensive pre wedding you've you've seen or heard of for for women? Because isn't there some sort of gift given to a bride at one point? What do you mean? I mean, well, there's gifts along the whole way. It starts at engagement like the engagement party and then it usually goes No, no, I'm talking about bridesmaids like that that are involved like what are they involved in? How many things? Cuz I I've, I've heard like 3 or 4 They're they're technically involved in all of it, which again is why like don't have bridesmaids. I, but I also think like okay, it's just let me, so let me just, fucking <laughs> rude like 5 days? Let me just finish Fuck this question. You. How who has 5 okay. days to go <laughs> celebrate someone and then on top of it they're probably like oh by the way we're also doing like a destination wedding then on top of no. it say no say no like just because that's what the bride wants doesn't mean you have to say yes to it though i just say like the fucking audacity no. of the bride just, to ask it's that. not even that though because the bride should be able to do whatever the fuck she wants it's her wedding but you can't expect everyone to say yes people who complain about brides you're the problem don't go say no say no okay fine Unless the bride gives a heart, gives like an attitude. People act like the bride has a gun to their head, and they're like, "You better spend money." I bet this you some of not. them fucking do. Then end that friendship. I'm sure. Then I'm end sure someone's like, "This is my special day. Everyone has to bow down to me there's, and all my shit that I want to do." There's two extremes at both ends of the spectrum, but I do think that like there's this culture, like uh, there are bridezillas out there. People do expect a lot. Like it's expensive, but like self awareness. People act like you. They don't have the ability to say no. Say fucking no. Sure, devil's advocate. Some of them like the bride guilt tripping them hard on doing of stuff. course but do you want to be friends with that bride then no say no and be like you're not my friend keep going <laughs> anyway <clears throat> wow we <laughs> we just answered the question there shall i finish okay so she told the bride she can't spend more than 1500 at the absolute most which is still a fuck ton of money I knew the bride was talking about going on a five-day trip. She wanted it to not be too expensive. I told her a way to make it cheaper would be to shorten it to a weekend or a long weekend. She said she thought it would be a waste of a flight. The bride then decided on Charleston, South Carolina for five days for the bachelorette. I sent her cheaper options for the Airbnb that had great reviews, were clean. They just weren't right downtown. She said she preferred to be in the middle of downtown by all the fun. She then picked an Airbnb that came out to a total of $3,500, the flight $500, the Airbnbs $500 each. The maid of honor and the bride booked the Airbnb without asking everyone if they were okay with paying that rate for it. With the added cost of food, drinks every day, as well as a rental car, Ubers after drinking, fun experiences, etc., it would be well over my limit. I then told the bride I would not be able to go because I couldn't afford it. My boyfriend and I have a lot of expenses, including rent, utilities, daycare for two kids, etc. When I told her I would not be able to go, she blew up my phone calling me and begging me to go, saying she would pay for me. I said I was not comfortable with that, and she begged me to go until I said yes, but that, would, but that I would not be able to pay for the Airbnb until March. She said that was fine. March came, and we had a surprise emergency expense pop up. I told the bride about all of this, and she said I would still need to pay for the Airbnb because the other girls were counting on me to go and everyone had already paid. I told her that we had discussed from the beginning what I would spend, and she willingly went over that. And now I can literally not go. She says I need to pay for the Airbnb because it's not fair to make the other girls who are going to pay more money than they had planned. 
We are still in the free cancellation window to get a full refund, but she lied to me and said that there was a $250 fee until I proved her wrong and caught her in the lie. There's no fee. I was supposed to be sleeping on the couch anyway, so even without me going, there is now a perfect amount of beds, which leaves me feeling 0% bad for the situation since she lied. But I want to know, am I the asshole? Oh my, you already know how I feel about this whole thing. So far, I pretty much hate this bride. I'm split here because in the beginning, I'm team you. I'm like, yeah, girl, you say no, hold your ground. But when you do commit to going and people do change up their finances and expecting on you to go, I think it's a little annoying when someone pulls out when now you have already Is the committed. biggest thing the Airbnb part? Because she said she was going to cover the Airbnb. If the bride said that. She and did it, say that. I, I think, again... Either way, this bride is out of line by putting you into a financial situation that you put your foot down. She, again, to your point when you were like, she is being pushy. She is being manipulative to you in this situation. $83, if the bride was willing to pay you, she should cover the cost for everyone else then for putting you in this position. A plus, you were going to be sleeping on the couch to pay the to Listen, pay the same amount to sleep on the couch. Just typical like champagne taste on a beer budget. If you're nickel and diming all, like what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? You want to have like this? You know, this is my moment, my wedding. I, I want the best of the best. Like lower your fucking expectations. That is so annoying and just tone deaf to everyone else. I mean, I was a bride who did a destination trip. You did a destination But what did party. you do? And what did I do? I booked in like, I'm going here. If you guys want to come, right. you're more than welcome. I didn't anyone ask anyone to go. Anyone who said no, I was like, I cool. get it. Yeah, did not give you a problem. I was like, that's 100% understandable. And I also covered what I could at that point, tried to find cheap alternatives for people. But again, like, I think you, you don't have, have to. You have, don't have to justify what we're doing because we're actually considerate well, no, of people. I think, like from the bridesmaid's point of view, you have to have the the freedom, the agency to say no and to stick to that. So my only issue here is you knew you probably still wouldn't be able to afford it. You said that you would pay in March. That's my issue: is that you said no, then you went back on that, and now it's putting other people in this situation. It's like you should have just said no and stayed there. Do I still think you're the asshole? Not really. The bride kind of like bullied you into this. But like, I do think that there needs to be some accountability to you committing to going and then pulling out last minute. Like, I don't think that's okay. Sure. I'm just having a hard time getting past the bride. That's all. I'm just like, <laughs> I can't focus on her because I'm just too annoyed with. I also understand situation. like not wanting to accept the bride paying you like paying for things <clears throat> like that's completely understandable too. But she put you in an uncomfortable position. I mean, you're likely not going either way, but maybe there could be some compromise there and just be, just say, I'm not, I understand that. Just give her the $83. You're like, I can't make it to your wedding. <laughs> John, you're always like straight to the moon. You're like, I'm fucking done. I'm out to the stars. Just like the older you get, uh, it's like, uh, if you're not bringing me happiness, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I just think people need to learn how to fucking say no. If you know that this is going to be a heavy lift on you, say no. No one is putting a gun to your head. And even if she is... That's the kettle calling the pot black, Alex. What? You. How? You have a hard time saying no to people. But like, do I ever... In what situation though? And then do I ever complain? No. What do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Whether it's plans, we'll just we'll just stay with plans for now. You have a hard time saying no when people ask you to do things. You know why? And then typical Al fashion, the day before the day of, you're like, I don't really want to go. That's a human experience. That's not just Ugh. me. It's also because I want to go in the moment and then future me is feeling lazy as fuck. And then what? When I go, I'm always glad that I went. The one part that you're why, leaving, John? The one part that you're leaving out in this is you also RSVP for me as well. And you know what I say to you? I always say, 
you don't have to come. No, you <laughs> yes, don't. I do. You're so and then you always, you're always like, yeah, no, I don't want to go. And I'm like, you don't have to come. But then you come anyway. And then what happens? You, are, you have a great time. You're a cauldron of lies you right now. You have a great time. This is really, you're triggered by this question because it's really about you <laughs> feeling like you have to do things you don't want to do. And John, All the time. you have agency over yourself. You can say no too. You can. <laughs> you're right. I make my own decisions. You do. All right, next question. <laughs> I'm a 28 year old female with two young kids. I was with my ex for nearly a decade and he is the father of my two kids. I found out my ex was bisexual and at first I wasn't okay with it until I found out that I was pregnant with our first child. I have nothing against men who are bisexual, but for what I'm about to tell you, I would never date another bisexual man. I decided to give it a chance and then three years later, my second child was born. During the last year of our relationship, I found out that this man had been catfishing me. He pretended to be me on social media and had the audacity to talk to my exes and local men from our town. I found this out because my exes DM'd me saying, someone is catfishing you because I know you would never talk to me like that. He would go on and ask these guys for dick pics and videos of them masturbating. It was really hard to leave this relationship because of financial issues and just finding an apartment on my own seemed impossible at that point. I knew I had to leave, not only because he was doing this to me, he had also been very abusive for years. Fast forward to 2023, I found an apartment and I'm co-parenting with my kid's dad. I have a new man now, but it's long distance. Here is the kicker in this whole story. My ex decided to catfish my current boyfriend now. Obviously, my ex was upset when he found out that I was dating someone new and he literally tried to sabotage my relationship. My boyfriend admitted that he entertained the catfisher. I knew it was my ex because my ex kept saying things like, your boyfriend is still fucking around and I don't trust him when we would talk about my boyfriend meeting the kids. I decided to forgive my current boyfriend and move on from this situation. I've been with this man for a year now and gave him the ultimatum of moving here by summer. I can't keep doing long distance for another year because I've been through so much and I don't want to wait for him. What is your take on dealing with long distance relationships? Do you think in my situation, this is worth it? That's the question you That's have. That's the question. That's the question it you have. It seems like that is not the what the question should be. He entertained talking to your ex who is catfishing him. So layers here. Your what? ex is catfishing relationships that you have. He was catfish. He will. He wait, was, wait, the ex, okay, the ex is who she has the kids with, yes. who they were married, and then after they were married, they found out that, she found out that he was bisexual, but kept going anyways, and then she found out that he was exing, uh, uh, talking to other exes, catfishing, saying that he was Other her. men, yes, her ex-husband was pretending to be her on social media to get dick pics and other mm -hmm. men masturbating because he was bisexual. So she left him, started dating a new guy, and the ex-husband then started messaging right. her current boyfriend. Oddly enough, I followed along on this story. Yeah, but your current boyfriend, I mean, get rid of him. Like, he's long distance, and he's already entertaining people on the <laughs> internet. Like, I already don't trust him. My issue is with your ex-husband who is now going to sabotage any relationship that you have moving forward. I'm like, dude, is this a police situation? Because he's literally pretending to be you or pretending to be other people. And now he's so involved that it's impacting who you're currently dating. I mean, uh, your to current be honest, boyfriend- To like getting the police to do anything about that, I'm sure that is like the lowest thing on their on their list of priorities that they but have like to deal with. Like a restraining order. Yeah. Like I feel like this is Can you do a restraining order for someone that's not physically near you though? Is it like a restraining order for like internet? I mean they are near each other because they co parent. I guess with being their an kids. imposter. Oh yeah. I mean to me this is like court situation like the, the, so bizarre. The fact that he's like manipulating and lying and just impacting again like stalking your current relationships like this is not normal behavior let the man be bisexual that is totally fucking fine but to pretend to be someone he's not yeah, he's affecting and, your life and impacting you like dude leave me the fuck alone be you could be a great dad to our kids you could live your life fuck who you want but don't fuck over me don't start lying to my current relationships like this this question and then you ask what are take 
is on long distance relationships. No, you got to fix your priorities. <laughs> what? Your priorities are off. I get like you're a single mom. You have two kids. I'm I'm sure, you know, you want to have some sort of relationship, but there's so many other people first things out first, there. Therapy. You need to talk to and someone. First things first. You need to get like a, a something with the police for an imposter. He's being an imposter, like you said. I think that's first, then therapy. Right. I just feel like you've been through a lot that you don't even know like what's up, what's down, what's right, what's true. I feel like you need to get like talk to someone, not us, who who can help you deal and navigate with this because now it's tricky. He's the father of your kids, but like he's he's just a liar. He has these obvious problems he has mental issues but yeah i think that this isn't something that i would fuck around with i've said this before like when you write these questions you know do you read them out loud to yourself like the people who write these then then realize i know they're looking that's why they're asking us but like i feel like you can answer this yourself reading this be like maybe this isn't my top priority right now maybe it's to figure out what's going on with my crazy ex also like do you want your kids around your ex who is making up these fake profiles pretending to be you or pretending to be other females on the internet. I just, he, he's not so secure in who he is, but like, you again, the your fact relationship that it's on hold impacting sure. you and your future relationships. But yeah, my take on your question is, um, yeah, long distance relationships can be worth it. But like, I think your current boyfriend's a piece of shit. He's, already talking to people on Instagram. And the only reason why you know that is because it was your ex-husband. It kind of annoys me that your priority is your relationship. I'm not going to lie. It kind of bothers me that you're like, that's what you're focused on. Like what the fuck? Sh what, as opposed to what her kids? No. That, Cause I was like, like that's what not her ex is doing. True. And like, you just only got one part of the question. I know, but how it's written is like, Oh, it just seems like that's the main focus. As opposed to like, should I go to the police yeah. for my... <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? Right. Yeah. I don't want to say anything else. That's fine. That's that's enough. Go to the police. At least have it on file. True. Whether they do anything or not, it's on file. They Correct. will do that. So if something does happen, boom. Yeah. You, got, you got a court case number or a case number. Because we've dealt with that where like, there's things that the police can't do for us, but there's a record of it so that speaking of an update, let's rewind. What? I do know that because, uh, I was a victim of identity theft last month. Oh yeah. So Another let's, update. let's talk about that for a second. Worst timing because we were getting a loan for the new home. The mortgage loan officer calls me and goes, Hey John, <laughs> uh, there's a ticket out for you or whatever the fuck it's called that you owe Verizon $8,000. And I'm like, I don't have Verizon. <laughs> yeah. I have like a phone or something through my no, like, <laughs> through my parents. Yeah. You can admit it. You can admit I have a phone it. through my parents. <laughs> I pay them every month. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm like, and it's like you open six lines Wait, of credit. I do. I would love to take a tally on how many millennials are still on their parents' plan because it's I am cheaper. I pay for it's it. It's cheaper. But like we no, we have to get onto our own plan. Why? <laughs> Someone help us. Anyway, that's not part of the story. But I'd love to do a poll to just be like, how many millennials still just pay their parents? <laughs> I, my parents also have like a. An extra four lines that we could throw. Anyone could jump <laughs> they on there. asked if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, we do it. I was like, no, I'm on my own parents. I'm paying like 50 bucks a month. I'm not going to go off that plan. Are you crazy? Yeah. Anyways, so he's like, Verizon, you know, you're, oh, Verizon, all this. Uh, it dropped your FICO score down to like under 600. So then I wasn't qualified for the loan. I'm like, this is the worst like we timing possible. have to just possible. go based off of your wife's incredible credit. Yeah. Which they did. Anyway. Yeah, they did. my identity wasn't stolen. I'm fucked. I mean, so I had to like freeze my credit, all this bullshit, but I had to, for them, for Verizon to release me from the eight grand or whatever, I had to file a police report mm -hmm. first just to say it's on there. And then I have like a case number in order for them to lift that. <sighs> that was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that was annoying. Yeah, it fucking was. It was terrible. I was it on was. the phone for like 24 it was hours. More cause like you were just in a horrible mood. I didn't oh. want to do anything else. I was just yeah. trying to figure it out. Right. I mean, and no one, everyone hears about people getting their identity stolen, but it's one of those things like you just don't think will happen to you. And then I got hit again. With what? With, with fucking Norton. Oh my God. They tried scamming you. So I also, 
LifeLock. Let's talk about LifeLock for no, a second. No, we can't. Keep- no, no, I need to. No, I need to. I need to. Because I want everyone to know this information because it's kind of fucked up. Seriously, LifeLock. So I go to get LifeLock now to help me with my credit, all this stuff. And like, perfect. I think we pay like $400 or something to do this. And then he's like, all right, let me transfer you over to the tech to help you. And I go, hey, um, so my credit got taken, my credit scores, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, we can't help you with anything that happened in the past, only anything future, <laughs> future. on. So we paid all this money for, for nothing. I'm glad for we Life have Lock. it now, though. And then Norton, <laughs> and then Norton, you know, like Norton McAfee, whatever, for your computer. I called them. And Are they like another cybersecurity thing? There's something like for when- your computer. And they were telling me all this stuff that people were opening credit cards and from are opening up lines of credit. They're getting cards from Walmart. Oh my Walmart. God, another red flag. John's on the phone and then I hear this guy and he's like, yeah, they have lines open in Home Depot and Target, blah, blah, all blah. All these different states. And like, I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, but um, you know, we'll get it taken care of for you, yada, yada. He's like, all you have to do is go to your local Walgreens <laughs> and get a Visa gift card. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, John, hang up the fucking phone. Hang up the fucking phone. And he's like, no, no, no. I think they're really helping me. I'm like, I swear to God, hang up the fucking phone. You know where all this stemmed from? What? Spectrum. That's not how they got your identity. That, that's not I where they got so. it. I think so. Anyway, I think we were doing the podcast then, right? Everyone knows about when you no, got it. No, I think it was like two months ago. Three months ago, Spectrum. I don't well, want, Spectrum. I don't want to go into it. We've been uh, we need to. I don't care. I need to because I want to let everyone know. Spectrum's great. But just a heads up. There is a scam going around. Where this random number will call you. Say they're Spectrum and be like, we're for a limited time. We're, <laughs> we're going to do your, you know, internet bill for 50% off. And I'm like, cool. I I'm call the number back. I'm almost positive we, we spoke about this. This happened before we took a break. Well, long story short, don't answer them. They also wanted you to pay with the gift card, which I almost did, but Alex saved me. Oh from my that. God. I feel like we're going to lose all of our money one day because literally you're just going to give it away in gift cards or, or someone's going to hack into our account. I feel like I'd trust you too much. But anyway, speaking of things that we're all embarrassed about, uh, we're starting a new segment, which we'll do at the end. And um, it's where you guys share a secret. And so we asked a few things. So I'm just going to share a few that I think are fucking funny. So here are a few of your secrets that you guys shared with us. First one, I peed in my freshman year bully's bully roommate's shampoo bottle when she wasn't home. She was awful to me with no cause, no regrets. Good. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, another one, secretly glad my mom died. My mother passed away in August of 2022. And since then, when people ask about my parents, I, of course, feel inclined to share my mother past, to which I always receive condolences. I secretly want to tell people to save it and that I'm glad she's dead. She was a terrible person and the world is so much better without her. No comment. I mean, to, like again, people have shitty parents to each their own. Um, next one, I was a sophomore in college and was in my dorm room. I had to go number two. I went down to the hall to the bathroom, but the cleaning lady was in there. So I went back to my room, waited a few minutes, then went back and she was still there. I could have gone into the stall and went to the bathroom, but I hate when people are there, especially for poop. So I went back to my room, freaked out, had to go so bad. So I grabbed my trash can and I pooped in the, in the trash. <laughs> Weirdest experience of my life. Taking out the trash was so uncomfortable knowing I had a bag of my own shit. Hey, at least you had a bag in the trash can. That's true. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the worst one, I, the story that I feel like everyone has heard is the girl who pooped in the toilet. She had to fish it out because it wasn't flushing. And then it got stuck between the window pane. So <laughs> like her... Her poop got stuck in between. Was this in, where was she? Like, was she at someone's house? I don't know. A, a boy, <laughs> a guy's house, I think. Oh, no. Well, those are just some fun ones that we have, but um, we could share more next week along with some other information. Some other big news. Some other big news. Um, Let's do our overs or whatever, whatever that segment is. What are you over? So what I'm over now that the news is broke. I'm over showing the house. Oh yeah, that's a good. I'm one. over cleaning the house. Mm-hmm. I mean, we clean the fuck out of this house every other day, like immaculately. Like we have to do a deep clean to show it for sales. It's just like every day, but we so... do that to ourselves. Who else can we blame except ourselves? We didn't have to move. We didn't have to do this. Like this is us. I know. I don't feel bad. Every for us. open house we had rained. 
It rained every open house we had, so we had to just do private showings because the, the open houses sucked. I just a lot. I just moving's a fucking lot. I'm over it. I'm. Oh, well, I'm glad that you asked. I'm overjoyed <laughs> that the time change. Now we get longer days. Now, well, it's getting longer, but like it's lighter out later. I was cooking dinner yesterday and just felt such an overwhelming sense of joy and happiness because I'm like, spring has sprung and so has... I hate how you're talking right now. <laughs> See, John, no matter what, is just going to try to bring me down, but he can't even do that. I'm just so <laughs> high. I'm just so happy. And fuck you. That's it. <laughs> I think that's it. I love that. I love that. Okay. I think I need to read a review. A review. A review. We love your reviews. All right. I got two reviews because Alex, for some reason, thinks I've read this before, no, no, but no, it's no, funny. No, just, so I'm going to read just, it. I'm going to read it anyways. Just read, no, no, the, just read I, that other one. I'm, I'm going to read both. I think you read it to me like on, a, on the day that I'm going to read this one and I'm going to read one more. Okay. Because I think this one's funny. I don't think I said it last time. So these two are hilarious. S. Ceviche, five stars. They are so funny and relatable. The way John boils everything down to the basics, less is more. While Alex is the opposite. More isn't more. More is barely enough. Let add some background, explain the colors and smells of the situation, and let's add some possibly made up backstory to enhance the story. <laughs> and John simply asks what Alex wants for dinner. Five stars, great commute to work listening. Oh, that was a good one. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a bad review. Not reading that <laughs> one. <laughs> They're back. Five stars. Mama Lamb 2010. Made my day when I was in the school pickup line and the latest episode was there. Happily married mom of three here and listening to you guys is so entertaining and confidence boosting. I wish you were around when I was still dating my ex 20 years ago because I was totally some of the girls that I write that write in asking if it's okay for a guy to walk all over me. But he's really great. I love him. You guys are totally relatable to this 40-year-old mama married to her hunky older man with his on-point facial hair. Ooh. Glad you got to take a break from the podcast, but man, were you miss. Keep it up keep you in oh, the train. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Glad that we could fill your ears with fun while you wait in that school pickup line. Man, that traffic is insane. Whenever we drive past schools, I'm like... You've never been in a pickup line before, so how do you know? You don't. Anyways, <laughs> let's plug it. Guys, first off, thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe, email, comment. We love you. You can email us at hello at give it to me straight podcast.com. You could submit your anonymous questions and secrets on our website. You can find us on all the socials at Give It To Me Straight Podcast. And that's it. We will see you next week. And guys, big news coming up. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye.